Hey everyone, it's Chrono from the Headphone Show. Today we're going to be taking a look at the third and latest iteration of the Momentum Wireless, which was kindly sent out to me for review by Sennheiser. Let's check it out. The Momentum Wireless 3 is Sennheiser's premium, portable, Bluetooth and NFC active noise cancelling headphone. Now as a more lifestyle oriented product, it's a little bit different from the headphones that we usually review on this channel. However, this is Sennheiser we're talking about, a company with a rich history in both high-end and professional audio. So, of course, in this review I'll be going over the Momentum's features, but I also want to focus on its sound and how it walks the line between lifestyle and audiophile products. Alright, so let's start off by talking about the Momentum's accessories. Included with the Momentum are two cables. The first one is a roughly 4 feet long locking 2.5mm to 3.5mm audio cable. And the other one is a USB-C charging cable with a USB-A adapter. Also included is a Sennheiser branded fabric cylindrical carrying case that, although somewhat large, should easily fit in most bags. Moving on to the Momentum's build, I think it's excellent. It's clean, it's modern, and its folding mechanism further reduces the size of its already small footprint, which is ideal for listening on the go. Aside from the ear cups, which are plastic, the build is composed almost entirely out of metal and genuine leather, which gives it a premium feel. Of course, I can't really comment on its long-term durability, but out of the box it feels very solid and it's got no loose or squeaking parts, so what I can say for now is that it feels well put together and I appreciate the choice of materials. Then for comfort, they weren't the greatest I've tried but they were still a fairly easy wear. The ear cups are a bit on the small side, but the inside of the pads still fit my entire ear, and they were deep enough to keep me from touching the driver. Furthermore, the headphones low 305 gram weight and the gentle clamp force helped in keeping the momentum from becoming fatiguing after prolonged listening sessions. The only comments I really have for the comfort are that I wish that the headband was just a little wider to better distribute the pressure up top, as I found that depending on placement, it could create a bit of a hotspot. And then, I'd also warn users with slightly larger ears, as theirs might actually come in contact with the inner sides of the pads. Anyways, let's now talk about the Momentum's features, as it's packed with various functions that greatly enhance its ease of use. For starters, the Momentum has a 17 hour battery life, which is a little shorter than what other ANC competitors offer, but it's still more than enough to get you through a couple days worth of listening, and it shouldn't be a problem unless you're planning on taking a direct flight from Singapore to New Jersey. Worth noting though is that the Momentum charges very quickly, as you'll get roughly one and a half hours of listening time from a 10 minute charge. The Momentum also features auto on off, which turns off the headphones when folded and turns them back on when open up to save on battery life. Smart pause is also a welcome addition on the Momentum as it pauses the music when the headphone is taken off or if one ear cup is lifted. Then, and this is a very nice feature, the Momentum has voice prompts for almost every action on the headphone. From pairing to letting you know you've reached max volume, the Momentum provides you with a lot of clear information on the headphone's status. So, for battery check as an example, you'll get something like More than 80% battery left. Last but definitely not least, there's the Momentum's main feature, and that is active noise cancellation, which uses microphones to pick up on and neutralize outside frequencies in order to reduce noise. In my experience, I found the active noise cancelling of the Momentum to be pretty good. For me, it was not quite there yet with what I've heard from some Bose and Sony headphones, but it was very close and it did a great job at cancelling pretty much all the noise around me when I was out taking walks with the Momentum. Of note, the Momentum has three different levels of noise cancelling, with the default being max, and then having a wind and low pressure mode which have lower levels of noise cancelling and can be selected via the Sennheiser Smart Control app. Regardless of which ANC preset I chose to use, I never really got any of the usual ANC pressure, and because of the headphones already great passive noise attenuation, I felt like they all blocked out sound really well, and well, what's most important is that once music was playing, that's all I could really hear. Now as for controls, you'll find all of them on the rear side of the Momentum's right ear cup. Starting from the bottom, you'll find the voice assistant and pairing button. If pressed quickly, the Momentum will activate Siri, Google Assistant, or Alexa if you've linked the Momentum to the Amazon Alexa app. 
This button can also be held in for five seconds to set the momentum to pairing mode. And if pressed again for another five seconds after it's already in pairing mode, it will clear the list of paired devices. Moving up, you have three media control buttons, which allow you to pause and play music as well as adjust volumes. It's also worth mentioning that some of these have multiple functions assigned to them. So if the center button's pressed down for two seconds, it will actually read out the headphone's battery life status. And then in phone calls, you can tap the center button to either accept or end calls. And then you can also keep it pressed down in order to decline incoming calls. Also during calls, if the volume down button is held for two seconds, the headphones built in mic can be muted or unmuted and you'll be notified via a voice prompt. Then the final button at the top is actually a switch that lets you select between the different ANC modes. So you can switch between off, on or transparency mode, which is essentially a pass through that mutes your music and boosts sound from the outside to increase your awareness. Okay, so now we finally get to talk about sound, which is where the momentum impressed me the most. In the past, most ANC headphones that I've listened to have been marred by issues like overpowering, boomy bass, recessed mids, and weak highs. However, these weren't issues that the momentum really displayed. It's honestly one of the more natural sounding headphones that I've listened to. All right, let's talk first about tonality. So. Actually, the Momentum's bass is still pretty boosted, particularly in the sub-bass region where it sounds to me like it's upshelved by maybe 5 to 6 dB. Now, some listeners might enjoy this boost in bass as it does emphasize the rumble and kick of those really low frequencies, but for me personally, it does make the bass response come across as a little swollen. That being said though, this is where the Smart Control Apps EQ feature comes in handy since it actually lets you turn down the bass and whilst unfortunately the graphic on the app doesn't really show you how to specifically change the sound since you only have pretty vague bass, mid and treble control, the bass self adjustment it applies seems to be a uniform one and it allows me to bring the bass level to one that's closer to my preference. Still, with or without EQ, the bass response of the momentum actually remains fairly clean as despite having that extra energy, it does seem to settle down, it, just comes, it comes down in energy at around 150 to 200 hertz, so it never risks sounding congested in the lower mids, never risks uh, bleeding into the lower mids, and it doesn't really overpower other frequencies. Moving on to the mid-range, it's easily got one of the best tunings I've heard, not only on an ANC headphone, but just in headphones in general. The mid-range is linear throughout, with well-represented fundamental tones in the lower mids, giving vocals and instruments a rich and natural body. Then in the upper mid-range between 2 to 5k, I find they that it has a proper level of energy, which gave instruments a accurate presence that never came through as forward or shouty. The mid-range is where I'm usually the pickiest, but there isn't really much for me to say here. Sennheiser struck a very good balance in this region and the result is a mid-range that to me sounds organic and faithful to the recordings I listen to. For the last part of tonality we have the momentum's highs, which also have a nice and even tuning to them with no dips or peaks making them sound strange or fatiguing. In the lower treble, the momentum delivers plenty of brilliance and a good amount of sparkle between 8 to 10k, which gives drum strikes a good bite, whilst also accurately reproducing the harmonics and overtones in this region. The one thing I will say for the treble region is that I feel like it could have used just a little more air above 10k, as it could have used a bit more glisten in the highs, and I think it would also have helped in making the momentum sound a bit more open and more resolving. Stepping aside now from tonality to talk about technical performance, we'll begin by talking about the Momentum's resolution. Okay, so it's no DT770 and it doesn't feel quite as effortless as an HD600 when surfacing the intricate tones of vocals and instruments, but the Momentum was still fairly resolving and it's not a headphone I would describe as being grainy sounding. Actually, for internal resolution, it's quite a bit cleaner than a lot of other headphones that I've tried, like the K371, ATH-M50X, and even Sennheiser's own HD58X, which I think is pretty good considering that it's a Bluetooth ANC headphone. Next, let's talk about soundstage imaging and layering. For soundstage width, the Momentum is a very close in and intimate headphone, so it makes very focused and personal soundscape. Now, whilst it may not convey the greatest sense of distance, I was actually surprised with how well it performed in imaging, as it evenly and accurately distributed the tracks across the stage with no gaps that I could hear. 
Additionally, the momentum offered a pretty decent sense of instrument separation and layering, as all the vocal and instrumental parts composing tracks and musical passages had a good degree of spacing and distinction between them, so while the soundstage presentation was forward, it didn't really feel cluttered or claustrophobic. Lastly, we have dynamics, which is a category where I do wish the momentum had been able to perform a little better. So in the low tones, it's actually pretty impactful and it does have some good punch to it. However, I feel like that's mostly due to the bass's elevation rather than the driver's own excursive capacity. And then unfortunately in the top end, although it's still there, it doesn't have quite as much of that tactility that I would have liked to have heard. So percussive instruments didn't quite carry their satisfying strike, whilst other instruments like guitars and pianos lacked some of their attack. Still, for the majority of my listening, the extra punch I had from the bass was enough to keep the music energetic and engaging. Okay, so now to wrap up this review on the Momentum Wireless, I think that these do and possess almost everything I would want from a compact wireless pair of headphones. Even though they may not have the most impressive technical performance when compared to some of Sennheiser's audiophile offerings, they more than make up for it with the level of convenience they offer, and the Momentum has undoubtedly delivered the best sound quality and listening experience I've had on an ANC headphone. To top it all off, they have a premium feeling design and are brimming with features that make it the perfect commuting companion. Heck, even for home use they're outstanding, as for the past couple of weeks I've been wearing these for several hours while working around my place or shooting b-roll. Anyways, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful. If you did, do consider dropping a like. And if you're interested in the Momentum Wireless, Sennheiser will actually have a sale going on for these from the 22nd to the 30th of November, where they'll be available for $349 instead of the usual $399. If you want to learn more about the Momentum Wireless or other headphones, I highly encourage you to check out the review section available on headphones.com. For more headphone audio content, stay tuned by subscribing to The Headphone Show and ringing the notification bell. Until next time, this is Chrono signing off.